Welcome back to part eight of Practical Bash and Terminal Skills. Today I want to talk about tar, the tar command, and how to use it to create and extract uh, tar balls. And I love this command because it's actually super simple, but if you look at it, sometimes you see stuff like Z, V, Z, well, C, V, F, stuff like this. And it looks so complex, but it's actually completely simple. And I wanna show you, I wanna take that fear of having this complex command away today. And I'll show you, we'll get started right away. So in order to have something that we can create into a tarball, we need files. So let's create file one. This is the content of file one. There we go. And then we have file two, just because we can. This is another file. And let me fix the capitalization here. Okay, so now we have two files, as you can see here, file one and file two. So let's create a tarball. So what is a tarball? A tarball is just an archive. And an archive doesn't always mean it has to be compressed, as you'll learn in a minute. So what we can do is create a tarball just to combine these to two files into one. So let's say you want to send this to per via email or want to upload this somewhere, and you can just upload one file. Or even if it's, if it's uh, well, in emails, you can add many files, but it would be hard to add a complex directory structure with like 20 subfolders. Um, it's much easier to send a single file. So let's say our goal for now is to create a single file out of those two files, but of course, without losing the relation between those two files. So the end user should still have two files because otherwise we could just concatenate them into one file. And that's what we use a tarball for. So let's use the tar command and let's see C. So C is the first of those obscure symbols and it simply stands for create which is actually kind of obvious now that you know it. And we want to create it and we want to write it into a file and that is F. And then after F you have to specify an argument, which is the file. So I'll just call this files.tar. .tar is a common ending. Of course, on a Unix-like system, you don't need endings like this, but it's still easier to recognize it. And then we can put file one and file two in there. So let's see. We can now see that we have a files.tar here. And please ignore the size for now. I'll talk about the sizes more in a second. Oh, for now, you'll just notice oh, it's a lot bigger than the two individual files, but that's completely okay for now. So let me remove file one and file two. You can see I don't have it anymore, but I have the tar ball, right? So it's in there, I can still access it. So before we extract it, I wanna show you something else, which is the T option which just lists all the files or the file names actually to be more precise. So let's list those files in here. And of course, as with any terminal commands, you can chain them. You could say, well, I only want to see if file one is in there and yes, it matches. So you could use grep for that. Now that we've seen the list, which of course, this is all a bit more interesting if the list is longer, but now that we've seen the list, let's actually extract those. Just a quick reminder, we don't have um, file one and file two here anymore. So to extract it, we just do the reverse and we say tar minus X for extract. And then we need to specify the file again, since we're not receiving input from standard in, for example, but explicitly from a file. So let's say files.tar and let's just run this. And as you can see, we now have the files again. So let's look at the files, file one and file two. And there they are, and they look exactly like they were. So now that I'm printing the contents of files, what do you think would happen if I print the archive itself? Any guesses? Well, there you go. So maybe you expected that this would completely um, damage my terminal now by printing some characters that it doesn't understand. But no, here's the important thing. Just because we have a tarball does not mean we have something compressed yet. And this is also the explanation of why this tarball is so much bigger than the individual files, because we have all this metadata here about permissions and about the files. And then in the end, we have the actual contents of the file. And this is all metadata that you need to recreate these files exactly as they were. Having said that, a tarball can be much smaller than its contents. And in this case, we want to use compression. So for this, um, it makes a lot more sense with a longer file. So let me just remove everything I have in here. Yes, Seashell, I do want to remove all of those files. And let's create a longer file. For this, I've already prepared a lorem ipsum generator here. And I'm just, no, it's actually German, but that doesn't matter. Let's generate 10,000 words, copy that. 
and just to see so pb paste is a max specific command it might be different on your system and i'll just pipe that into head just so i only see the first couple of lines okay this looks good so instead let me redirect this into a file and i call it long file or you could call it long file.txt if you uh, like endings on text files so if we look at the files here it's 59 kilobytes so surely we can win some by compressing this file so let's give it a shot we're creating an archive again we're additionally setting the z option for uh, using gzip to compress it i'll also set the v option so you learn about another option which is uh, verbose it prints uh, the file names of all the files that it compresses which is very helpful if you if you do like a tarball of your entire machine for creating a backup because then you have a bit of a progress and you see if the what the, the command is currently doing and of course we also need to specify a file so for this one i'm just going for a long file and now i'm using dot t dot uh, sorry dot tar dot gz which is a very common one or sometimes you also see tgc which uh, helps the the user by indicating that this is zipped gzipped in fact so let's do that and in there we put long file because we have verbose mode on we see the file here so let's look at our list again and now you can see we have just 1.3 kilobyte here as opposed to our 59 kilobyte original file and that's of course a huge saving i'm not going to go into how a gzip algorithm works super interesting topic there's great videos on youtube but this is unrelated to how the tar command works so i'm not going into that here but just as we did before let's remove the original files so that we only have the archive just to prove that we can get the contents back out of it and then let's maybe do again a t just to list the file okay there's one file which is called long file and then to extract it we do exactly the same use x for extracting we use the z option because it should use gzip and then let's also make it verbose again and the file name long file there we go let's see and now it says x as in extracted the file long file and let's see so here we have long file again and if we display the content this is going to be very long but that's okay there you go there's our long file so that's it to wrap it up the tar command it has more options than the these but these are the ones you really need every day so you need c to create or x to extract v makes it verbose it's completely optional if you specify f then you can specify the file name otherwise you can also specify it from standard in or standard out and by using the optional z command you can create a gzipped archive or gzipped tarball and then it's also nice uh, to your users if you have something like tgz or tar.gc i hope this took the mystery out of the tar command i love it i use it a lot and i hope you will do so too from now on thank you for watching and see you in the next one